You guys asked, so I'm answering. What's up, you guys? Thank you so much for tuning into this week's video. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you saw that I put up a couple of posts saying ask me some questions and I'll be sure to answer them for my next YouTube video. That is exactly what we are doing today. I have 16 questions that I have in this little jar and I'm gonna be picking them one by one. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little scared for this because some of them are absolutely ridiculous, but we're gonna get into it. I'm actually sweating because there's questions in here that I actually really don't want to answer. <laughs> Alright, first question. Where's- oh, that- I don't want to start with that. I don't want to start with that question. So we're gonna cheat a little bit. First question says, what inspired you to start a YouTube channel? Well, I've known for the past couple years that I wanted to start my own channel. However, I just never really had the balls to do it. But being that we're in this pandemic and I have so much time on my hands, I figured now's the perfect time. So. Here we are. What is the funnest music festival you've attended and why? What's the next festival on your list? Funnest musical, funnest music festival that I've ever attended in my life is Ultra 2018 because I've never experienced, that was like my first big festival, I guess. That year, I did one of the craziest things that I've ever done. Our flights were actually canceled in New York because there was a nor'easter. So we actually drove down through the nor'easter to get to Miami. I was doing whatever it took to get there and we got there and it was the best experience of my life. The next festival on my list, I definitely want to go overseas. I want to do Creamfields. Creamfields is definitely up there. I also want to go, this doesn't, this isn't for festivals, but I want to go to um, Ibiza. Definitely, definitely on my list once Miss Rona gets her shit together. Oh, I don't want to answer that. <laughs> I don't want to answer that question yet. We're gonna leave that for later. When did you know you liked the Poon Tang? <laughs> this person wrote all in caps, Poon Tang. Poon Tang, I think they left the N out. But um, yeah. The very earliest that I knew, I would say preschool, kindergarten. And you'll know why when another question comes up. Kindergarten. And this is a really good question. It says, what will it take for you to feel like you're finally where you want to be in life? Okay. <sighs> I believe that happiness is not a destination. Oftentimes in life, I feel like we say, I'm not gonna be happy unless I get that job I have or that car I have, when in reality, you get that job or your car and you're still not entirely happy. I mean, I think, like, do you get what I'm saying? To answer this question overall, I guess I would say I would have a job in my field, which is making horror movies or TV shows, and if you know, that's a very, very difficult field to get in, as well as having my own house with my own family. I would say that that would make me where I finally want to be in life. But that's like kind of the beauty of life, where you think you're gonna end up here, but you know, life comes with so much that you don't expect. So who knows if I'll ever get a job in my field? Who knows if I'll even have kids one day? When it comes to questions like these, what you really have to practice is being happy where you are now in life. That way you don't struggle as much getting to where you want to be, if that makes sense. You see where I'm going with this, sort of? No, not really. All right. If an alien came from outer space, introduced themselves, would you let them clap cheeks? <laughs> If they bought me dinner first, hell yeah. Story time, best experiences at festivals and crazy memories. I love how I got this question. I wanted to do a little bit of a tribute to my favorite DJ. He actually passed away today, Garrett, AKA IO. The experiences that he gave me at EDC Las Vegas, 2018 and 2019 were two experiences that I will never forget in my entire life. So in 2018 I met him, he was performing at the Parliament Art Car, and when he came down he looked at me and he was like, you're Val from Twitter, and I was like, oh shit, yeah that's me! I couldn't believe that he recognized me. He is such a super, super, super nice guy. He was always willing to talk to his fans. He was incredible, so I want to share some clips that I had with him and of his performances, so. Dream a
Another one of the best experiences that I've ever had at a festival was we were watching Chris Lorenzo and we see this guy on someone's shoulders and my friend is like, yo, that's Fisher. So I look over and I was like, oh shit. We immediately went over to him, we said hi, and how you would expect him to be on social media is exactly how he is in real life. He's so funny. So we went up to him, I said to my friends, I was like, yo, watch this. Went up to him and I was like, yo, can I dance on you for a snap? And in his Australian accent, he was like, oh my God, I don't think my girlfriend would appreciate that but that is the funniest thing I've ever heard in my life and then he introduced me to her uh, she's very nice that was the worst Australian action that I've ever done but that is my Fisher impersonation the craziest memory that I've ever had at a festival oh my god this story is absolutely ridiculous I <laughs> Ultra 2018, we were at Keizo's set. So I'm in this mosh pit, right? We're all going crazy. I turn and I hit my head on something. And I thought that I hit my head on another guy's head, but really the guy bowed me in the face. I can feel a little bit of a scar right here. So I got hit, I was like, whoa. And then I knew I messed up when I felt the blood pouring down my face. But like, I didn't even care. I was so hyped. I remember the blood on my face and I remember going to my friends and I was just like, hey guys, oh my God, my face is bleeding. I just got bowed in the face, but you know what? I think I'm all right, I'm gonna go back in there. I was so like hyper and excited that I was just talking like a million words per minute. It was just, I can't, I don't even, it went something like that. First celebrity girl crush. All right, remember the question that I was like, first time you realize that you like the poontang. All right, this, this question has something to do with it. When I was in preschool, kindergarten, I went to a school in Queens called OLBS. We had an after school program. I kid you not, every person to this day still probably knows me as Posh. I was so obsessed and in love with Posh Spice that I told everyone that that was my name and they actually believed me. So this one's for Posh Spice. My current celebrity crush is Sarah Paulson. She is a queen. We love her. 10 out of 10. I've watched everything that she is in. I love her. Oh God, oh God. This next question says, what is your experience or stance on hooking up with someone that you work with? All right, I don't wanna to get too personal on here at all. I'm just gonna say I have dated a couple women that I used to work with when I worked retail uh, and I'm traumatized. I, I wish I was joking, but I'm really not. My stance on it, I know people who have gotten married from first being co-workers. I think that is a beautiful thing. However, for me and my experiences, I will never ever ever date someone that I work with again. I've learned the hard way that you don't shit where you eat. That's just me. Next question. Next question says tips for getting a club penguin girlfriend. This is this is the best question. First of all, this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna take them out to eat at the pizza spot. You're gonna get a slice of pizza, then you're gonna hit the club. The club is where all the magic happens in Club Penguin. Get her one of those puff can you get them like those little puff pets? Can you give those as gifts? If you can, get them a puffy. I know if I got that as a gift, I'd be like, all right, let's go back to my igloo. This question says, hey, um, hey, what's up? You're cool. If you could buy any exotic car, which would you get and why? I would get a Rolls Royce, because I like the little I like the little diamonds that they have on the roof of the car. Does a Rolls Royce count as an exotic car? No? Maybe a Lamborghini? Those are fancy. So why I would get any of those cars would be because like look at them, like they're beautiful. Sorry, I really don't know cars. Next question says, next question says, would you ever wait? I forgot my question. Then she asked me, would you ever consider creating your own media production company? I have definitely thought about this before. However, I don't think that my work is nearly, nearly as professional as I would want it to be if I were to start my own company. Plus, to start a media produ production company is money that I don't have. But I have thought about it before. Maybe it'll happen in the future, I don't know. <laughs> I hate the person who asked me this question. How long is your strap? Oh my god. Seven inches. It is seven inches long. No, I'm just kidding. I am as single as they come right now. And I plan on keeping it that way. Unless, ladies, you can prove to me that you are not crazy, you are not a fake lesbian, and you are not still in love with your uh, ex, then maybe we could talk. Next one's not really a question, but it says, show clips of shows, festivals you've experienced, and speak about why you enjoy going. I enjoy going to shows and festivals. I've always loved dancing. I always loved music, always loved dancing. And going to a show or a festival is unlike any other experience ever. It's like the moment you step in, nothing else matters. The community is so loving as a whole. You can be yourself, dress however you want. You meet the nicest people ever. It's just all around great vibes. That's why I love it. Unless you're one of those assholes that likes to push their way through to get through the front, that's you. Oh God. This next question. 
The next question says, worst date you've ever been on? Let me tell you something, I don't date often, but when I do, I come out more and more traumatized every time and I'm left in a three to four month mental bender. Don't wanna to get too personal on here at all. However, I am gonna say, the person involved ever watches this video, know exactly who you are. You had asked me one time if you were my worst experience. To answer your question, yes, you were my worst experience. I'm not gonna get into details or anything. All I'm gonna say is, I hope you're happy with your ex-boyfriend and uh, go f yourself. How many cactus can you put up your butt before you become a desert? Uh, serious question. I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna go with three. Why are you a bad bitch? Uh, I don't know, God just sprinkled some Italian seasoning and adobo and you get this. Thank you, I'm flattered. The last question is, what advice would you give to your younger self? I love this question, this is a good question. Advice I would give to my younger self is to not take life so seriously. Take it seriously to an extent. Something that's not gonna matter in five years from now, you should not spend more than five minutes stressing over, period. All right guys, well that concludes this video. I've answered all your questions that you have sent me. I hope you guys like this video. If you do, a thumbs up, comment, subscribe. That way you guys can stay updated with with videos that I put out every week. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next week.